welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I would do a bit of a different video for this week um, because this week I actually went into the third year of my PhD. I, I can't believe that time has gone by this quickly. It literally feels like just yesterday that I went into my third year. I thought for this week's video I would sit down and chat about how my second year of my PhD went, whether I managed to hit my goals for my second year, what I learned in my second year, and I also thought I would speak about how I feel going into my third year and what I want to achieve and when I'm supposed to finish. So my degree is supposed to be three and a half years long. I started in June 2019 and I'm supposed to finish in November 2022. And the three and a half years is supposed to be three years of practical lab work with six months of writing up at the end. We will see if that's actually going to happen because obviously there's been something going on in the world, which I'm not going to mention, um, which has hindered my progress a little bit, unfortunately. I thought today I would also outline what my PhD is actually about because I realise I haven't actually done an introduction to what my project is about. <laughs> so just to give a general outline of my PhD project, my PhD is sponsored by the Oil and Gas Technology Centre and I do my project at the National Decommissioning Centre which is part of the University of Aberdeen. So my project isn't really a conventional chemistry project as it has a focus on the oil and gas industry and decommissioning. The main focus of my project is to try and find new solutions to stop biofouling of marine structures. Biofouling is typically consisted of macro and micro fowlers. Your micro fowlers are typically an aggregation of algal, fungal and bacterial cells which make up a slimy biofilm layer. And this slimy biofilm layer then attracts really large organisms and hard organisms such as mussels, barnacles, hard corals, which then settle on top of the biofilm layer and form a really thick encrustment on boats and docks and oil and gas rigs. This thick encrustment of organisms is difficult to remove and also really costly to remove so we want to find some more preventative ways to stop these organisms from attaching to subsea structures. There are currently solutions out there to fight biofouling, however recent studies are actually showing that the current solutions are harmful to the marine environment and they can also be accumulative so they build up over time and can have harmful effects on marine wildlife. So this is where my project comes into play. My project focuses on trying to find natural products, so natural compounds which come from living organisms, such as plants, marine invertebrates, bacteria, fungi, etc. So my project focuses on marine invertebrates, so that could be marine sponges, marine corals, um, sea stars for example, and I try to find natural compounds from these organisms which can be used to prevent biofouling. It sounds very simple but it's actually a combination of chemistry and biology and I'm not a biologist so that part has been quite tricky for me but it's actually quite nice to get the experience in doing a PhD which is completely interdisciplinary. Okay that was a whistle stop tour of what my PhD project is about. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to just ask me in the comments box below. So now I would like to speak about the second year of my PhD. So I technically started the second year of my PhD in June last year, so in the midst of Covid basically. Uh, here in the UK we went into lockdown in March last year and things started to lift up at around the end of July time. So I missed four months of lab work. As you can imagine, this was incredibly difficult. I was transitioning from my first year into my second year. I had hardly any data. I was missing time in the lab. I was just beginning to get the hang of things in the lab and then everything shut down. Even though we got back in the labs at the end of July, we weren't allowed back in full time because a limited number of people were allowed in the labs at any one time. So it meant that I was only getting about two or three days per week to do my lab work at the university. This has changed very recently, I think only in the last couple of weeks that we're allowed some more people in the lab, it's still not up to full capacity yet. So from July last year until now, I've been basically trying to do a full-time PhD in part-time hours. As you can imagine, it's been incredibly difficult and incredibly stressful and I'm not quite at the stage of my PhD that I would like to be by now, but what can I do about it? <laughs> 
However, there are quite a few positives that have come out of my second year. So reflecting back on my second year, I feel like I've actually achieved quite a lot and I maybe haven't given myself enough credit for what I've achieved. First thing, so when we returned to the lab after the lockdown last year, I managed to isolate my first compounds of my PhD. This was very, very exciting. So one of the compounds is a known compound, uh, a known compound from marine invertebrates. However, this compound hasn't been tested for the type of biological activity that I'm looking at. My second compound is a compound which in the databases it seems to appear, but it hasn't been isolated from a natural source before, which makes me very, very interested to see if it has any biological activity and maybe I can publish a paper out of this one compound. Another thing that I achieved in my second year was that I supervised my first undergraduate student in the lab. It did end up being only for a few weeks though because of Covid, but at least I got some experience supervising an undergraduate project. Also, I won a competition in my second year, which was really, really exciting. It was a competition where I had to write an article explaining how my research ties in with industry, and I was one of the three winners for the competition in Scotland. And finally, just recently, I managed to optimise and develop my own bioassay in the lab, which I've been working on for months and months. And this is a really, really crucial part of my project to help me progress faster and to be more efficient with my work. So it's been incredibly rewarding that the last few months of my work has paid off. And I'm hoping I can publish some papers um, based on the results that I should get soon from my bioassay. So moving forward into my third year, I'm really hoping that things are going to get back to normal soon. Not just for my project, but just for the sake of the world, really. I really want to try and finish my PhD on time. And obviously due to COVID and not being able to get into the lab, I didn't have lab work for four months. And I'm really hoping I can pick up the pieces and not have to add those four months onto the end of my PhD. I don't know if this is realistic, I just really want to finish on time, I don't really want to drag things out for too long, I just want to try and be efficient in the lab, get things done, prioritise in order to get enough data to actually write my thesis, at the same time while not burning myself out and being able to take care of myself, spend time with my family and friends and to still enjoy life while getting things done. Another thing I want to do in my third year is to publish my first paper. Papers are really important in academia and I have published a paper before, but this was in my undergraduate degree, but for my actual PhD project, I haven't published yet. For my specific degree programme, it's not a requirement to publish in order to graduate. However, I think I want to stay in academia after I finish my PhD. If I'm staying in academia, it's important to have some papers under your belt. So fingers crossed. I managed to publish a paper, at least one, um, before I graduate in one and a half years time. Another thing I want to do is just to keep being resilient and keep working hard. Um, in research, there's ups and downs all the time. Experiments fail. You don't always have success. You've got periods where nothing is happening and then whoa, you get a result that you really need and then you have a moment of quiet again. And I just need to remind myself that not everything is going to be a success and if something fails I just need to pick myself up and keep going which I think I've managed to do quite well over the last few months trying to develop this assay because things went wrong in a lot of in a lot of places and I managed to pick myself up I managed to get to the end I managed to get it done and here I am something I learned from my second year and that I want to bring forward into my third year is to not be afraid to ask questions to people don't be afraid to send emails because my project wouldn't have progressed as much as it has in these last couple of months if I hadn't annoyed people with emails, if I hadn't annoyed people with how to do things, and if I hadn't organised meetings to discuss methods and uh, to plan experiments with other people's help. So one piece of advice if you're starting off in your PhD just now is just ask questions. Don't be scared to ask any question. No question is a silly question. So yeah, hopefully in my third year I will publish a paper, I will keep being resilient and I will gather enough data to write my thesis and finish on time. Thanks for watching today, I know it was a bit of a different video but I just wanted to take some time to reflect on this last year since it's been a bit of a roller coaster, and just to think about what I want to achieve moving forwards and just share that with you guys. Wish me luck and success for my third year please. Thank you for watching, bye!